Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello, Lord. John Brownstone. Of Loving BDSM, where we help kinksters like you have happy, healthy power exchange relationships. That's the rumor. Uh, we consider reading not just a pleasurable pastime, but a way to learn. Yeah. Broaden our horizons. Mm -hmm. Have happier, healthier power exchange relationships. But also, you know, we just like to read. So <laughs> we're back <laughs> for another installment of Kinky Book Club. Uh, this month we were reading fiction. Yes. And not just fiction, but a graphic a novel. A graphic novel, yeah. Called Yes, Roya. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to like talk about our overall kind of thoughts about the book, spoiler free, if you have not read it yet and might think you might want to. Uh, and then we'll like cut and there will be a timestamp down in the description box and we'll warn you, hey, now this is a spoiler zone. So, <laughs> um, it's a short read. It is. Because it's it, a graphic novel. It, it's it's short but sweet. I got through it super fast. Yeah. Which was kind of nice because I always feel guilty because I feel like I wait to the last minute <laughs> to finish these books. And I was like, wait, this is a graphic novel. And I'd never read a graphic novel. Oh, shame on you. See, for me, what I found very enjoyable about this, I, I grew up reading, you know, comic books. Mm -hmm. Now they're called graphic novels, but... And, and it was like a, a deep dive into something I enjoy and have missed. And kinked up. Yeah. Because it's a kinky graphic That's novel. That's right. A kinky erotic graphic novel. Yeah. So the basic premise of the story, yes, Roya, is that this young uh, illustrator, artist. Aspiring artist, aspiring yeah. Aspiring artist named Wiley um, idolizes um, another artist joe joseph mm -hmm. uh, i'm not going to try and say the last name because i was reading it going, <laughs> that's a word i won't be able to say correctly out loud so we're not even going to try um and he reaches out to this artist that he idolizes and um is also trying to get a job as an artist and that's not working out right. it's set in 1963 so it's a completely different time period than what we're used to today. So Wiley lives in a boarding house. Um, Roya is a black woman who is ma not married to, but partnered with Joe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this can be uh, par part of the spoiler free section. She's the dominant one. <laughs> she yeah. is in charge. There's a reason the book is called Yes, Roya. Um, <laughs> and essentially, uh, Wiley is brought into their relationship. Um, he is 19. They are not, they are older, um, more mature. The consent, what I really liked about that was, might not be as um, intensive or extensive as we'd like in real life, but there was consent yes. there. Um, their first encounter with one another, um, I think both of them, both Joe and Roya were like, you can say no, you can leave. We won't be upset with right. you. Um, there was a lot of, in those moments of, oh, I looked at you and I knew, and that I kind of sometimes give side eye to, but I could suspend disbelief because it was, you know, an erotic story in a comic book. Um, Go you. <laughs> I, you know what? Here's what helped. They, the consent was clear. Yeah. It didn't take up a, a bunch of time or space, but the consent was clear. So before we get into the details of the story itself, mm -hmm. um, because that'll be that it's such a short book, that'll be the spoiler zone. Um, and I would like to dive into that. Let's talk about our overall thoughts. So I will go first because I think you have nicer things to say. <laughs> I thought, first of all, the artwork was really cool looking i'm not one i've never read an erotic graphic novel i'd never read a graphic novel i'd never been interested in comic books as a kid like that's just not my thing um so to see the artwork that was cool to see to have it move really really fast because that's what it is is a comic mm -hmm. book uh that was kind of nice i was took a little pressure off me this month to get a book read <laughs> but here's what i learned and this is nothing against the book I don't like graphic novels. <laughs> Shame on you. So here's how I, what I was thinking. <laughs> and you will recognize this reference more than anybody actually watching this. Ages ago, I reviewed a sex toy that, I mean, like years, that's a clit sucker. Um, and I remember, and I remember telling you this, that I got the orgasm, but there was literally no buildup. Like one moment I was like, do, do, okay. do, do, do. The next moment I'd gotten off. And that was mm. it. We were done. 
reading a graphic novel <laughs> is the literary version of that to me. Meaning for me, and this is not a knock against graphic novels. I think mm. they're a legitimate way to read and to consume information. If you enjoy them, please read them. I think Yes, Roya was an excellent story, but it was the same thing. What I like about reading is all of the pictures and images and scenery being painted in my head. Mm. And because of the nature of a graphic novel, I got the pictures. And then I think partly because they were also, uh, it's an erotic story. <laughs> like it's graphically pictures. I mean, it's, you know, cock out coming, you know, Roya being eaten out as she should be. Okay. <laughs> um, and all I could think was, I don't, I don't really want to look at this because here's the other part for me. It felt like voyeurism ah. and I'm, I'm don't, I'm not a voyeur. Um, so yes, the story is really good. The artwork mm -hmm. was kind of cool. If I, when I could look at it separate from the story and just look at it objectively, I was like, this is really nice artwork. I liked the fact that I had the experience, but I'm going to stick with my, my, uh, full wordy books from here mm. now but i know you loved it spoiler i you did loved it. i did yeah. i i really enjoyed it um it it was like i said earlier it was a bit of a throwback to you know my younger days of reading comic books you know having that aspect and and the kink aspect all thrown together it was just like uh, <laughs> for me <laughs> but you know aside from all that I loved the characters. Mm -hmm. I loved the characters. To a certain extent, Wiley, the main character, the young 19-year-old. Oh, um, I'm G so innocent. You know, I, I kind of saw myself, I kind of identified with him a little bit, mm -hmm. which, you know, brought it home a little bit more for me. You could see 19-year-old JB in that position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I, I kind of could too. Okay, I'm here for that. <laughs> Considering there is a lot of, of oral and physical sex and uh, dick sucking going on. <laughs> I mean, my, my this, this, I'm not that, a voyeur, but my imagination likes this, that, to and the other. a young JB in and, that situation. And see, for the exact opposite reason from Kayla, I love the artwork. I, I, I love the, the visual aspect of it. Does it, for you, does it help you imagine the story in a more vivid way than, because I know you read all kinds of books. Sure. And obviously, you know, you're not just reading graphic novels, so you get, you enjoy both sides, but does that help you have that vision a, in your a head? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed the artwork because I, I like, I genuinely liked the artwork mm. it was fun yeah it was a light read mm -hmm. like a graphic novel should be um the story was short but concise yeah and it's a pretty simple storyline yeah i mean there now i would say that it is a simple storyline and we're gonna get into that spoiler zone mm -hmm. and yet there was depth to it there yeah. was meaning to it mm -hmm. i really like that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the interplay between the three characters wiley joe and and roya um, was great. Mm -hmm. And then you had that, you know, that tension brought in and kind of added to the, to the flair of it, mm -hmm. which was really cool. And, you know, some of the, the things, you know, I'm going to date myself a little bit, you know, the era of night of the sixties, you know, yeah, I, I could kind of relate to how some of that stuff all played into what oh, was going on. Oh yeah. There was one character, not of the three main characters, one character who uh, was worried he was going to be outed as gay in the sixties. So mm -hmm. he was vicious because of it. There was one character who was never overtly racist in what he said, but his demeanor within the artwork you knew yeah um and then um when the three of them it was kind of made clear that they were there was something between them even if nobody knew what mm -hmm. that same racist character was like oh you're a bunch of those freaks get the hell out of my house <laughs> um and that felt very 
uh, very much like I think the picture we have in our head of what the 60s was like. And also I was like, oh, gee, I, I recognize some of these things beyond that time frame. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think what we need to do is get into the spoiler zone. Okay. Of this. All so right. if you have not read Yes, Roya, and you are interested and you don't want to know all the details, this would be the place to stop. Uh, if you're either <laughs> not worried about spoilers or you've already read it, let's keep going. So as we said, it's really about the relationship between these three. Yes. Wiley is the aspiring um, artist who idolizes Joe and gets advice from him. It actually gets kind of rescued from him, air quotes around that, uh, at a job interview that he was not going to get that job. Right. Um, and what you find out very quickly in is that Joe is the face of of it he presents the artwork that's made him quote famous and wealthy mm -hmm. um, as his own but it's actually roya's artwork yeah and the reason is not explicitly stated and yet in a way it is if like you today's audience should understand when she says she's a black woman she's like i know if i present that i either won't get nobody will print it or i won't make right. the money that i know it's worth so with my permission joe says it's his i do the work we're together. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with this. Now, as a modern reader, I'm like, God, that fucking sucks. And yet I'm also like, Ooh, but, and, and yet in the context that, of the era that era that it's written in, exactly. you understand completely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there was that part of me that was like the injustice of it. That's fucking right. bullshit. Um, and then at the same time, you're watching her control this relationship. Now their power exchange, which was never stated as power exchange. I don't even think they use the words dominant and submissive. Mm -mm. Um, it was very much understood as a kinky reader. Um, that power exchange was very um, strict in, from my perspective. Yeah. Um, it was literally what does Roya want? Roy, if, you know, with consent, you do what Roya says. You what don't Roya think, wants, Roya gets. Right. You don't think, you don't question, you just do. It was one of those things like if Roya says take off your clothes, you take off your clothes, but you don't do anything else. You don't question, you don't do extra movements. Mm -hmm. It and I have briefly been in those kinds of like situations mm -hmm. and it for me it's hot and sexy for about five minutes and then after that yeah. we're done. But this it was a very um, I wouldn't call it high protocol well, at all. That, that's but... where I was going to go with it. Oh, okay. it, it. It is very much like a high protocol. Without the language of high yes. protocol. Um, yes. Nobody was calling her mistress. Nobody, mm -hmm. like there were no titles used. It was, it was a lot of yes, Roya. Yes, Roya. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when they bring Wiley in, because in that meeting that Joe and Wiley had where he was sort of, you know, telling him stuff about being an artist mm -hmm. and getting jobs and stuff. Um, this is the part where I kind of went, mm, because Joe was like, I just knew it. I just sensed it. And I was like, I don't, I don't personally love that. But because the consent was clear, I allowed the suspension mm -hmm. of disbelief. I was like, okay, I'll go with this because they didn't, it wasn't like a lot of stories where I just knew and then we never had to talk about it. Right. They gave him an out. Um, but the very first, like, sexy power exchangey thing wasn't with Roya directly. It was Joe sucking Wiley's cock because yes. Roya wants to see Wiley's O face. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and then the next sexy lesson is making Wiley watch Joe eat Roya out. Yes. Because hello, you got to learn how to do this. She, she <laughs> wanted him to learn how she liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was apparently a fast learner. Yep. Um, uh, in that part, because there's, like we said, that's the main plot and storyline. And then there's these little extra bits so that we kind of alluded to earlier. So in that main storyline, I really loved the section where I think it was kind of towards the end of the story when, when the drama, uh, the subplot drama was kind of mm -hmm. happening. And they were sort of telling him, okay, you have an out if you want it. Like, if this is not what you want, no hard feelings, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And Wiley, I can't do an exact quote, but Wiley basically says, this is the the closest I've ever felt to who I really am. Yeah. I am completely in touch with myself. I can't imagine not having this life anymore. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh! Right? Yeah, no, it was a cornerstone moment, I think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And even though this story is really short, you watch Wiley from the very beginning. He's like a bumbling, naive, young kid who is trying really hard and kind of knows what he wants, but he's really uncertain. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I mean, like, I remember being 19, 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and by the end of it, he, it's like he recognizes he still has a lot to learn, but he's a lot more but, confident. But he, you can see from beginning to end that there's growth happening, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. to me, too, I mean, that that's something that, you know, you find in most DS relationships. Healthy ones, for sure. You know, hel yeah. yeah, healthy ones. You know, that, that there is growth on on many ends. Yes. You know? And as so, it's not explicitly stated. Well, maybe it was. You might remember better than me. So as we get further into it, they're like, look, if you want to be this kind of illustrator and artist, we can help you. We, you know, we've got contacts. We can mm -hmm. teach you stuff. And at one point, I remember looking at one of the images and it's uh, Roya and Wiley in the, like the art room um, drawing um, and doing their work. And Joe's like, do y'all need anything? Are, right. are we going to the beach today? And they're like, no, we're busy. <laughs> Here's a part we kind of, um, I didn't forget, but we kind of left out. So the way this kind of came about he goes, Wiley goes to Joe's house to like meet him and get to know him and have 30 minutes of his time. Yeah. While he's there, he goes snooping in their illustrator room, their art room, and finds a fetish image of Roya dominating Joe. I think it was Joe in the picture. It was Roya I, dominating. I, I, don't, I don't remember explicitly the, the picture, but he finds a fetish picture. Yeah, that, that's yeah. been drawn by Roya, and mm -hmm. he thinks it's drawn by Joe. When Roya comes in and is talking to him, like, what are you doing in here? Apparently in a panic, he crumples it up and he puts it in his pocket to hide that he has it. And then we see him later um, masturbating to the picture. So you know it's yeah. done something to him. Mm -hmm. And that's what sort of sets the scene for, yes, from the reader's perspective, we know that he's kind of ripe for this. This yeah. is his jam, yeah. even if he doesn't know it yet. Mm -hmm. um, so their relationship is actually the smoothest part of all of this, which I was kind mm -hmm. of, it's it's nice to just see a power exchange relationship that can work without a lot of extra drama in the relationship. Right. I mean, I understand why storytellers put the drama there because you need conflict to make the story move. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nice to see that that wasn't the conflict yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't It wasn't in the relationship. The The conflict came in the, uh, the work aspect. Right, and everybody yeah. else around them. So mm -hmm. uh, Wiley had been living in a boarding house, which is something people did back in the day if they didn't, you didn't really rent an apartment, you rented a room. Mm -hmm. It was almost like a long-term bed and breakfast kind of thing because there was yeah. meals and, and whatever um and so he was living with an older couple um the wife wanted to entertain thought joe the illustrator because she didn't know the real story of who was drawing everything uh was oh my gosh he's famous he's in the newspaper invite him over invite his wife her husband's older and, and he's just cranky. I mean, he's just written as a cranky character doesn't trust anybody but he's giving roy a side eye the whole time over dinner. Yeah. This is towards the end of the book. Um, when the other person who creates drama in a bit of conflict um, comes barreling in, nobody introduces Roya to this guy. And she makes the side comment, you know, maybe next time you'll introduce me or something like that. It was like she was yeah. both as a woman and a, definitely as a black woman was completely ignored in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I like that that was not completely glossed over. Roya certainly right. made a note of it. Um, and then the next, so yeah, that guy's cranky and, and racist and also doesn't like these clearly hippie freak people. There's <laughs> something going on. He's got good instincts. He knows something's going on, uh, but he doesn't know what. And then the other source of conflict. So in the midst of this story, Wiley is getting advice and help from Roya and Joe about the industry. Um, and he mm -hmm. goes back for an interview to try and sell one of his comic strips or whatever. Um, and he's treated kind of badly and they bad talk Joe really bad. They're like, I'm sure Joe mm -hmm. has stolen this artwork. You know, he came in for a job interview one day and it was this kind of art that wasn't any good. And then it was like a flip, a switch flipped the next day. Total flip from to what he, he, he didn't, he was and doing it's because he was, Roya was ghost writing, ghost, ghost drawing. Ghost illustrating. Right. Thank you. <laughs> in my world, we call it ghost writing, but and, and he was doing that with her consent, but these guys were suspicious, which right. I do, un the suspicion made sense, mm -hmm. frankly, because yeah, nobody changes like that overnight, overnight. that no. quickly. No. Um, and of course he couldn't say why it was different, but they um, 
they were trash talking Joe to Wiley and they were saying, Wiley, if you are friends with Joe, if you're going to associate with Joe, you're never going to work in this town. Right. And they basically usher him out the door. And in that polite back in the day way where uh, you said one thing and did another and you couldn't always tell what something meant, they basically kicked him out of the office, but basically told him he was going to be blackballed from getting jobs if right. he continued to associate with Joe. So then he comes back to them and he's like really upset and he's like, what is going on? And they, they were like, oh, that, that was wrong, blah, blah, blah. So it's at dinner towards the end <laughs> when cranky racist guy and nice little old lady who just thinks Joe's famous and so happy, um, they're all at dinner. And here comes this illustrator guy, the, the, editor, the editor, that had denied Wiley a job. And he's knocking on the door and he wants to talk to Wiley. He wants to talk to him in private. And Joe's like, they invited the editor they, over. They actually invited him over. Okay. You, how did this happen? Um, it, it stemmed because Joe felt bad that Wiley was being black, black bald, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from getting a job. Right. So he wanted to set things right. And so he to, invited the editor to so, the dinner. So he devised a plan to invite him to dinner. Gotcha. And, and that's how that all came For about. For a short story, I've already got the details confused. So... <laughs> That's happening, and they're talking to him outside. And that's when, and I feel like I never got the subcontext until it was pointed out to me. Mm. Joe's like, you made a pass at me, and I was too young to know that you were making a pass at me. And I probably would have taken you up on it, because, yeah, I was totally into it. But because I rejected you, you've been waiting for me to out you as a gay man, like, or into guys mm. all this time. Is, is that what this animosity and anger is about? And the editor's denying it the whole time. But the way he's denying it, the way the the illustrations show like body language and facial expression, like it's clear that that is what happened. Yeah. And so now, yeah, yeah he's he hates Joe with a passion, um, doesn't want to be in, around anyone who associates with Joe, um, and will do anything to sort of protect himself. Um, the, my remembrance of that is the editor dude just stalks off like whatever. Pretty much. And that's yeah. not really resolved. No, it's not. But in a way it is resolved because Wiley's like, I don't want to work for that guy anyway. I want to kind of go my own way and make my own art. Yep. Um, and that, that was kind of cool because that was another point of growth mm -hmm. for Wiley, which is really, I think it's the relationship is the point of the story. And mm -hmm. even I would say Wiley's growth in this is, is the yeah the story correct um and then at the His self discovery yeah yeah and then right after that old racist crusty guys like well you either need to leave those people alone or leave my house because those people are not welcome in my house ever again and while he's like okay see, see ya, ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i really like that too because and i did a you know uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah because i mean it is not unheard of for people to crumble in the face of that kind of mm. pressure because especially if you are not yet confident in who you are right. and people that you know and respect and admire are telling you that this is wrong. But he had, and I didn't get a sense of how long this timeline was in the story, but it mm. was, there was time had passed. He'd had yeah. enough time to develop a relationship. Sure. And he was like, okay, fuck you, gotta go. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, you can send my stuff or you can toss my stuff. I I'm out of here, yeah. Moving on. Yeah, went and moved forward without a single mm -hmm. look back kind of deal. Uh, and yeah, that was a that was a nice triumphant moment too. Yeah, yeah. again, yeah. again, what I really like is that the sources of conflict in this story were not the kink. It was outside the relationship yes. and the kink, the, yeah. The relationship and the kink were relatively healthy, moved mm -hmm. forward relatively smoothly um and i didn't get the sense that it was this unrealistic kind of thing where nothing bad ever happens it just sort of felt like there was at this point in their relationship there's no major conflict for them that they hadn't either been able to resolve without you know the side conflicts mm -hmm. were enough yeah um yeah so yeah so yes roya uh graphic novel written mm -hmm. by c spike trotman um, I am not, I'm still not into graphic novels. I would love this story as, I don't want to call it a regular book, but you know, a regular book for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, because I would love to paint those pictures in my head. And I think that what I missed are some of the small details and asides that a graphic novel yeah. just gives in a different way. But the story itself, like if you've never read a graphic novel, 
I recommend this is your first one. If you love graphic novels and you're into like kink stories, highly recommend. Yeah. Highly yeah. recommend that. And one. and see for me, I I really had no inkling that something like this was around. I mean, I I know there online there's some things, you know, mm-hmm. and I do read some stuff online. Um, that I subscribe to, but I could go down a rabbit hole with this stuff. I think you should. Um, the author's Amazon page had a ton of other stuff mm-hmm. that was similar style. I don't know if the stories were similar, but yeah. similar style. Yeah. yeah. So we enjoyed Yes, Roya. We did, very much. Uh, we're house divided on yet another issue, but we did <laughs> enjoy the story. So hopefully if you are interested, you will check it out. The links mm-hmm. to buy it um, are down below. Uh yeah, so next month, we're back to nonfiction. Yep. Uh, it's a book that I bought ages ago and haven't read yet uh, called <laughs> Playing Well with Others by Lee Harrington and Melina Williams. Um, I is about BDSM community stuff. So mm-hmm. instead of just the relationship aspect, we're actually looking outwards. Yeah. Um, very, very interested in reading that one. That'll be next month's book. Uh, if you want more information about Kinky Book Club, the books we're reading this year, books we have read in the past, Links are down below. If you've read Yes, Roya, uh, tell us what you think Mm -hmm. uh, and how you sort of thought about that story. Uh, If you enjoyed this video, we love a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. If you uh, like this enough to want to come back, please consider subscribing. And once you subscribe, go ahead and ring that bell so you get updates of new content. Just do what Daddy says. And if you (laughs) really like what we're doing here uh, on the internet and you want more of it that you can't get anywhere else, join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Lords. Bye. Bye.